Hey everyone out there, my name is Ryan and you are at musicwithryan.com. Today's uh, free lesson, we're going to go over Wildwood Flower and standard tune for uh, traditional and old time bluegrass music. And I'm going to do it, of course, in the Carter style, very straight ahead, beginner arrangement. Um, so I'm going to walk through it measure by measure with the tabs on the screen. Nothing really too fancy about this, um, you know, hammer on here and there, but again, sticking real close to the melody for you beginners out there. So let's go ahead and listen to the arrangement. One, two, one, two. So as you've seen, very straightforward, easy arrangement uh, for you beginners out there. I think this would be a great way to learn this uh, classic tune in the key of C. Um, I'm going to walk through it measure by measure and give you close-ups on my left and right hand so you see exactly what I'm doing. And so you can um, you know, master this song, uh, Carter style, of course. And I'm going to go through the whole lesson, um, the whole piece for this video. And um, free tabs too. If you click the link in the box, it'll take you to my um, my Dropbox account, so you can uh, check out the the tabs and download them, or print them off, or whatever you'd like to do. Um, I'd ask you please subscribe to my page. Uh, that'd be super great. You can follow along. You can check out my website, musicwithryan.com, for other videos much like this um, for guitar and bluegrass and acoustic music. Um, so yeah. Thanks for checking it out. Let's go ahead and start walking through this tune. So the markings on the bottom of the staff are pick direction, up and downs, and if there's any numbers on the top of the staff, it is your left hand fingerings. But for this Carter style arrangement, um, like most Carter styles, it sticks right inside the chords, you know, my um, C, F, and G, and so I'm not gonna be doing too much left hand movement. Okay, so it starts on beat three. And I'm going to go ahead and count us off and then kind of play those first three measures. So one, two. Okay, do that again. One, two. So the first three notes right there, we got quarter notes, kind of a little pickup in there, and I might use my pinky, and sometimes I might use my third finger for that note on the third fret on the D. Either way is really fine. I try to use my pinky, and things will be a little bit more connected for me, but really, um, it's not the end of the world if you use your third finger. I think I do it sometimes just by instinctually. So. Um, D string, same thing. And then right when I get to this open G, I want to make sure I'm down for the whole C chord. There's a little down up two eighth notes right there. That's what those are connected. And then I'm going to move my second finger to the G string on the second fret. And I hit my B string. My first finger is already there. Move my second finger back. I'm using my pinky here. Open D. Okay, so a little H means hammer on. And um, again, we don't want, we want, okay, eighth notes there. Pretty 
pretty straightforward. I got a nice connective um, feel there, and I, you know, I see my, use my third finger too. So either way, it doesn't matter with that that F note right here. But um, and then uh, moving on to the next two measures into the first ending. Really not to move too many fingers again. We have a quarter note down, up. open D to hammer on on the second fret. My second finger's up. And then that little pickup, uh, the ending, the first ending, got that little pickup like at the beginning. So. parts together Second ending. So let's look a little closer, just real quick at the second ending. Um, down, up. I use my pinky on the third fret to grab that on the B string. And also, too, like if you notice when I'm strumming my down and ups, I'm really just kind of focusing on the bottom three or four strings. I have marked in the tab the bottom three strings. You know, if you hit the bottom four, that's fine, but. Um, you know, you don't want to get necessarily across all the strings. You kind of want it to um, shape up that chord a little bit. And so the melody rings out a little bit more clearly and it's not just a wall of sound. Um, so that's why I, I kind of chose to, you know, strum just the bottom three or four. And it's kind of common in um, this style of playing. So second ending. Take us into the B part. Okay, so checking out the B part. I'm going to stop right there. So, right from the beginning of the B part, high E. Back to that pinky note. Open G string there. And my F chord. second measure there you're seeing you can hammer really both or you can hammer and pick one like I have written um, to your discretion but just so you know or as you see I'm really sticking to the bottom three or four strings on my strum pattern there I'll just break go a little slower through those um, next few measures. Still over the C. Hammer on the D. And I move it on. Those two measures again. So, little two hammer on 
chords on the D and on the G. And then I pick up back into the B part. Okay? And another thing I wanted to mention too is like, I have the chords written above each measure and you see me fingering the whole chord even though the tab sometimes is only calling again for the bottom three or four, but I want to finger the whole chord for a couple reasons in case I accidentally hit a wrong string or, you know, then I'll still be okay. Or, um, and also to prevent any unwanted overtones. Um, so I'm getting all the right overtones. So I'm going to play, um, back up one measure and take the second ending because it's just ever slow slight um, actually I'm gonna take the coda the ending if I was the last one to play so and that would be my C over G that's what you have written there so it's a little thicker ending chord all right so go ahead and uh, walk through that. You can print out the tabs get in the box below. I'll have free tabs there. And I uh, hope you enjoy this lesson. If you like it, please subscribe, uh, comment, or share it. So uh, thanks, and uh, stay tuned for more lessons.